fellas. So in this video, I'll be talking about the choice of browser. So Chrome versus Safari. So most people don't have a Mac computer. So in that case, a lot of them will choose to use the Chrome browser because it has a host of benefits like a lot of extensions and so forth. Now, on the Mac operating system, because I have the choice of using the Safari browser, which is built in by default, and it's got a host of features um, that are exclusive to the Mac, I'd very much want to use the Safari browser over Chrome. Number one, it's faster, and number two, it's got this reader view so that if you're reading some article, you can click on this reader view button on the top, and you can easily browse through the, the, the article without seeing any of the ads. So you can just focus on the text at hand and the pictures at hand. You don't need to worry about the distractions. So this is a benefit. I know on Chrome you can have this as well, but on Chrome it, you would have to install some third-party extension and the reader view would not be as smooth. All right. Also, if you have a if you're using the uh, Safari, another benefit is that you can launch the reader uh, the reading list and it'll the articles that you save will be synced between your phone and your computer, assuming you have an iPhone. So that's the benefit. But other than that, mostly Chrome has the benefits. So, I mean, in this video, I'll just show you how I replicate most of the features on Chrome here on the Safari browser. Okay, let's go. Uh, all right. So one of the features that Chrome has that you may not notice you'll have on Safari is that on Chrome you can install an extension called the full page screenshot and it'll, it'll screenshot the entire page so like this entire article from top to bottom it'll basically screenshot the whole entire thing now on Safari this can be done if you do the option command I or you can click inspect element and here in the HTML, you simply go up to the top where it says HTML, select it, right click, and click Capture Screenshot. All right, I'm not going to actually do it, but just click Capture Screenshot, it'll capture screenshot. All right, so what are the other benefits that uh, are available on Chrome that I'm trying to replicate on Safari? Well, let's look at the extensions that I have installed. All right, so down here, this one is called User Scripts. User scripts, what it allows you to do is to inject JavaScript and CSS into web pages. On Chrome, there's an extension called User JavaScript and CSS, which basically does the same thing. Now, let's talk about the next one called Translate Web for Safari. This is the equivalent of Google Translate on Chrome. So on Google Chrome, if you're reading some website that's in Chinese or in Spanish or in some language, you will have the option to, I think, right click or go up at the top somewhere to change the language to translate it to English. On Safari, there's this uh, extension that does it. And by the way, um, you can find this Translate Web for Safari extension inside of the App Store. However, it's going to cost you like one or two dollars in the App Store. And if you don't want to pay for this one, uh, this app, you can simply go into GitHub and in GitHub, you can download this uh, app for free because the situation is like this. In the Apple App Store, Apple likes to charge a 30% tax on all products that are hosted in their App Store. And the people that host the app in the App Store are not allowed to talk about the apps uh that you can get the app somewhere else. So if you download the release directly from the source code or directly on GitHub, you can get this extension for free. All right, this one is called Newsfeed Exterminator, and this is the equivalent of Facebook Newsfeed Eradicator on Google Chrome. What this uh, extension does when you enable it is that on your Facebook wall, it's going to replace your new default newsfeed with a quote. 
So if you find your Facebook news feed distracting, all you have to do is to enable this extension and instead of seeing your Facebook news feed, you're going to see a quote from Confucius or from Mark Twain or from whoever and it'll be a lot more minimalistic and a lot less distracting. All right. And this extension is called Image Finder for Safari. So this is equivalent to the Google Chrome reverse image search. If you don't know on, sorry about my voice crack, but on Google Chrome, if there's say some picture like this guy, if you right click on the picture in the Google Chrome browser, there's an option to reverse image search to see, um, to see all the, to see where this image comes from. Right, so you can tell Google, hey, where did this picture come from? And it'll pull up the original website that showed this picture. All right, and so on Safari, the equivalent to that is called the Image Finder for Safari extension. And you can find this on the, uh, on the App Store. And it's free also. Uh, also, you can find it on GitHub where it is open source. This one called Open in, in Aina, I have never used this one before, so we can skip past it. But basically, Aina is the equivalent of QuickTime Player, except it'll play a lot more different formats. Like, it'll play like Flash video, MKV videos, you know, AVI, dot .avi videos, and a whole host of uh, videos that QuickTime Player just might not play. Then there's Focus for uh, YouTube. The equivalent to this app on Google Chrome is called DFTube, where DF stands for Distraction Free. So on Google Chrome, Distraction Free Tube or DFTube, what it does is on your uh, YouTube homepage, it'll hide all the videos and make it blank. That way you can focus on the videos at hand. And also, when you're watching a YouTube video, it'll hide the, si the right sidebar so you don't get distracted. All right, and this focus for YouTube does the exact same thing for Safari. All right, and this app used to be in the Apple App Store. However, now it's no longer in the Apple App Store, probably because the developer doesn't want to pay the $99 per year developer fee that Apple charges for all apps or for all developers that put apps in their App Store. All right, so this app, Focus for YouTube, you can find this one on GitHub. Then there's this one called Dynamo. So Dynamo is the equivalent of the Google Chrome extension uh, called like YouTube Fast Forward or Video Fast Forward or something like that, or Video Double Speed or something, right? So in Google Chrome, if you search for like uh, Double Speed YouTube or uh, Fast Forward YouTube or something like that, there'll be a bunch of extensions um, to fast forward your video, all right, and Dynamo does the same thing. If you press the F button, it'll make the video go faster. If you press the S button, it'll make the video go slower. So you can make your videos double speed, and this Dynamo doesn't uh, have to work for YouTube. It works for other sites as well, like Vimeo and, and other websites, all right, and this is called uh, the next one, okay? This one's called DuckDuckGo, and DuckDuckGo has two here, but basically what it does is if you enable this extension, which I will not do, but if you do enable this extension, this DuckDuckGo privacy extension is available on Google Chrome as well, all right? And what it does is that in your uh, on your browser up top here in the nav bar, it's going to show uh, a letter grade for how private C focus this website is. So... If the website doesn't track you a whole lot, it's going to give you an A score or maybe A plus or something like along those lines. If the website is google.com, for example, it's going to give you a letter grade of a D or it's going to give the website a letter grade of D because it tracks you a whole lot. Some websites track you a little bit, so they get a B. Some track you more, they get a C, but it gives you a letter grade. And the higher the letter grade, the less the website tracks you. All right. And now the next one is called Dark Reader. This one is free on Google Chrome, but it is not free on the App Store, the Mac App Store. So naturally, if you if you have this one here, it's going to cost you money 
Um, it's around five dollars ish. And what this one does is that it allows you to make the website go into dark mode. So if you click on the extension, and uh, you, you and you turn and you toggle it on. Uh, I have a shortcut for toggling it on, but basically, if you toggle it on, then it'll make the entire website go dark. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Now let's go back up here. There's two more extensions to notice. This one, uh, let's talk about yeah, th this one on top first. It's called AdBlock Pro. So what AdBlock Pro does is it'll block ads on YouTube. I mean, not on YouTube. On Google Chrome, there are a bunch of different ad blockers as well. There's like AdBlock. There's like Ghostery. There's a bunch of uh, blockers on Google Chrome. I will not go into those, but this is the one I use in particular for um, YouTube. Yeah, so if you're watching this uh, video and uh, there are no ads, well, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, look, I would be a hypocrite if I'm telling you to block ads on YouTube, yet I'm putting up ads. Oh, but, you know, monetization. All right, whatever. Let's cover a different topic. And this one uh, is called AdGuard Custom. So AdGuard is another extension you can install in the uh, app store uh, Chrome has this one as well but basically I use this one called AdGuard custom and basically I have a filter list that allows you to filter out certain thing okay I'll, I'll go into it in detail all right so basically what this does is that I'm gonna go into what is it called yeah AdGuard I believe AdGuard for Safari so let's open this up I'll show you exactly what it does because it's pretty difficult to explain, all right? So I have over here in user rules, I'm blocking out duckduckgo.com dot YouTube pause overlay dot YouTube scroll min. And what the heck is this? Well, what this does here is I'm gonna block the YouTube overlay because any time you watch a YouTube video on some other service, I like to use duckduckgo. So on DuckDuckGo, if I search up some uh, video, all right, so I'm gonna search up a video, um, there's gonna be no overlay, right? So let me play the video. Hey. So he's talking about a video, I'm gonna click pause. When I pause, you notice there's no overlay right here, right, nothing, no overlay. So I can, there's nothing blocking me, right? So this is really good. Um, if, for example, I am to disable this, uh, ad guard custom right here then it'll be problematic because when I watch some video say I watch this video there's gonna be this more videos uh, pop-up that's really really annoying um, so that's why I have it there and this is particularly useful when I am watching like leak code tutorials or something right so Hua leak code all right so say I'm watching some video on leak code and he's going over how to do the leak code problem. Uh, and he's like talking about his stuff. And I want to look at his code, so I pause the video. And then this annoying pop up pops up. And sometimes when you click the X, uh, you're like, haha, there's no pop up anymore. You play it again. And then you pause the video again, it pops up. This video, uh, or with the YouTube overlay for more videos, related videos, you have to click the X like three times, five times, or something before it actually persists and never pops up again for this particular video you open up another video and you pause the video it's gonna pop up the overlay again so that's why I have ad guard custom right here to block the related videos that way with it enabled see I enabled it here I can watch the video and I can pause it at any point and not get the distracting related videos uh, pop up popping up and blocking the screen so that is pretty sweet all right, so that pretty much covers it for the extensions right here. All right, so let's go into the details about the extensions. All right, I know this video is long, but um, I find it to be very informative and I hope it can help you as well. So let's quit this. All right, so let's talk in detail today about the user scripts uh, Safari extension. Now, everything I show you in this video involving user scripts, recall that you can you, you can do the same thing in Google Chrome if you install the Chrome extension called user JavaScript and CSS. 
Okay, so here is the user scripts um, icon. I can click on it and it'll show me the different um, the scripts that I inject into the website. So I have two CSS that can get injected and three JavaScripts that I, I inject. And there's a plus icon here where I can add new CSS and new JavaScript. All right, so let's go over these in detail. All right, so first off, let's look at um, this one. It's called Leak Code Hide Subscriptions to Unlock. All right, uh, so what am I talking about? Well, if I go to leakcode.com, right? And I go to problems, right? This is where I do my leak code stuff. You'll notice that right now everything looks really nice and pretty. But if right here I have this uh, feature disabled and I reload the uh, leak code, this is how it would look like for most people, right? Um, there's this lock icon here where it says subscribe to leak code premium in order to unlock. Now, at this point, I have not paid for leak code premium. I will probably pay for leak code premium once I do some more problems and I yeah once I do some more problems but at this point I I will not subscribe to leak code premium just yet and so with all these lock icons that if I click on it'll tell me to subscribe to leak code premium but but I just find them distracting so that's why I have the script right here that allows me to hide the subscribe to unlock and basically when I reload the page, it'll hide all the all the problems that have a lock on it. Now on Google Chrome, you can do similar. Um, you don't have to use a you don't have to inject a custom JavaScript. In Google Chrome, you can just find an extension called like uh, just search up like leak code like leak code hide locks or like leak code hide premium or something like that. There's plenty of leak code uh, Google Chrome extensions and it'll help you hide the problems, all right? And if you want to see the code itself, uh, I'm gonna click on this and show you. This is the code that I use to block, uh, to block the sub subscribe to unlock, all right? So now let's talk about another one. So what about this one? Copywriting course, edit any website. So this one, you can find it over here on the uh, copywritingcourse.com. So this guy, uh, Neville, uh, he's a professional copywriter and he teaches people to write like copy marketing for, uh, for like teaches people how to write ads and stuff. So he basically says that if you use this JavaScript code right here, which, you know, it's the same as the code right here, it allows you to edit any website, all right? So right now you can't ed edit the website. But all you got to do is to toggle this uh, edit any website on enabling this JavaScript and all you can do. And now you can just say uh, you can edit this website. All you have to do is reload. All right. I reloaded it. And then I can just say uh, this is how to edit any cool website directly from your um, browser. This um, happens in 2020. And this will instead of be by Neville, it'll be by uh, productivity career, right? So you can edit any website as long as you have this JavaScript enabled. So I'm going to disable it for now. All right. Now let's go to the top and talk about the disable video for DuckDuckGo. So just like how I spend a lot of time on YouTube, I also spend a lot of time watching YouTube indirectly through the DuckDuckGo browser, right? So this is DuckDuckGo. You can search up some video on DuckDuckGo here and it won't have ads, all right? So here's another example, okay? So Graham Stephan, right? So this is, uh, Graham Stephan is a finance YouTuber, talks about real estate and, uh, uh, real estate, credit cards, finances, that sort of stuff. And he is notorious for putting in a lot of ads in his YouTube videos, right? So he'll put like five ads in his video, maybe one in the beginning, one at the end, one in the middle, and like uh, two somewhere else, right? So like maybe five ads or seven ads in a single video. That way, more monetization, right? But if you search up the same video, like this one called revealed my brand new home tour. If you search this video on YouTube, you're going to see a lot of ads if you don't have ad blocker, right? Um, but if you watch it here on DuckDuckGo and you just click on the video, uh, DuckDuckGo automatically skips the ads. So that's a good part about watching videos on DuckDuckGo. 
And also YouTube doesn't trace you as well. It'll just say that, yeah, yeah, YouTube doesn't trace you as well, right? But sometimes I will find myself wasting precious time watching videos on DuckDuckGo, this video tab, right? So if you want to disable that, all you have to do is to toggle this disable you, uh, video DuckDuckGo, and then I can just reload, and you'll see that this video tab should disappear. So now you'll notice that there is no option to view videos. That way, you don't get distracted. But of course, if you want videos again, you can uh, you, you can stop the disable and then you can reload it. And now you can have the videos button back. And by the way, if you want to know the code, uh, this is the code I have for disabling the YouTube videos. Okay. And two more to cover. This one is called unlimited medium articles. All right. So some code. All right. So what's the story of this one? Well, for one, uh, if you go to if you like reading articles from uh, from medium.com medium.com is basically some website that uh, it's an online publishing platform that allows people to write articles on it and medium allows you to read like a few uh, free articles without logging in and then it'll bug you and then it'll pop up a paywall that blocks you from reading the article it'll say hey make an account and then we'll let you read uh, more articles so then you make an account and after you're done making a medium account it'll say hey um, you've read your limit of medium articles for uh, this month or this week or this day or whatever the time period is and basically you got to pay five dollars a month for premium and then you can read unlimited articles um, yeah so if you want to bypass that um, all you got to do is just uh, use a script now uh, I'll just go so how is this? How's I? How did I figure out? All right. So, what's the alternative to this on Google Chrome? All right. On Google Chrome, uh, let me pull it up. Uh, Chrome Web Store. There's one called. Uh, there's an app called uh, Medium Infinity or Infinity Reader or something like this. So if you click on this one for Google Chrome, if you have Google Chrome, you can simply go to his GitHub to read his source code to see just what's really up. But basically, if you have this extension, when you're reading a minimal uh, medium article and this thing pops up where it says you read a lot, but you got to up upgrade or whatever, simply hit reload, reload, and then the full page will show up. All right. So I wanted the same feature for Safari as well. And so I was looking at different, I was looking at Quora and other forums and stuff, and I found out that um, there was this guy. Uh, wait, let me see. Uh, he talked about readable, readable like this. Uh, I forgot what it was called. Uh, basically, there was this. Um, let me find it. Yeah, right here. This source is called this website. I'm going to show you. So this guy on GitHub, he created this Redium uh, uh, bookmarklet, and you can watch the video here. So basically, what he says in the video is that you simply bookmark this code. You you take this uh you take his code. I forgot where it was. Yeah, this code. You drag it up into the Chrome bookmarks, and then anytime you're reading a Medium article and the uh and the paywall pops up, you simply click on the Redium bookmarklet and it'll allow you to read the entire page. All right. And so I wanted this feature as well. Yeah, I'm not sure why this uh, more videos is popping up now. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, I mean, I have custom turned on. I don't know. Uh, we'll figure out. I'll figure it out that later. Okay. But yeah, anyway, I was saying, okay, so this code, it works, right? So basically I took his code from right here um you can uh copy the link and open it up on and you can see this is his javascript code so i just threw this javascript code into a javascript prettyifier like on websites on the internet you can search up javascript pretty and it'll basically make the pretty version of this javascript after you do after you did that i basically took uh that code and i dumped it into here and i also disabled the the uh, the stuff for the other websites. Um, uh, Medium is not the only website with paywall. There's also Bloomberg, Business Insider, um, New York Times, and a whole host of other ones, right? So I basically just disabled the code for those parts and just kept the part that allows you to read Medium articles. 
and then basically um, I have this toggled on all right so I can read unlimited medium articles so if you want this code um, you can copy the code that I've shown here or you can go to Redium, uh, Redium right here uh, if you use Chrome and drag this thing uh, this button up to your Chrome uh, Chrome bookmarks or you can copy the code all this code the ugly version and just paste it all in here it doesn't have to be pretty all right now let's cover the last um, the last piece of uh, stuff injected into websites so this one is the CSS called YouTube channel search bar so it fixes the dark text on dark background uh, for dark mode so what's that mean well usually uh, when you're when you're uh, reading some what uh, when you're watching stuff on YouTube right let me go to YouTube daily blob for example right I think that's what it's called some channel okay uh, this guy is called Eli the computer guy uh, let me click on the video all right right so right here normally in the search bar you can type some stuff it's in the dark mode right but if you change this to the dark mode all right then uh, what happens is if you type stuff here it should be white right originally there was some problem with this dark mode uh, dark reader extension and what will happen is the text over here that I'm typing the DDDD right here this text instead of being white it would be black and black on black background uh, looks pretty hard to read so that's why I added this code bit right here that says if the dark theme is turned on for Mac OS then all you got to do is change the text color to white so that it's white text on the back on a black background all right and so that's how it works all right that'll be all for this video i hope you liked it if you liked it leave a like and subscribe the usual the usual gist um but anyway that'll be all i hope you got something out of it and yeah that's it bye or how do i say bye in a better way all right yeah